Let's solve this question. This is about a certain school district where 100 parents were surveyed. And the survey was about what is the opinion that these parents have on the district's budgetary priorities. There are some plans that the district has on where to spend money and they took opinion from 100 parents about these. So the table here that we have, it shows what the percentage of all survey respondents, that means of all 100 parents who indicated that they strongly agreed with something, they somewhat agreed with something, somewhat disagreed or strongly disagreed. These are the four categories among which they chose their answers about each of four actions that should occur. So according to the plan that the district has, they planned on reducing class sizes, on adding music classes, expanding library hours and so on. And for each of these actions, these hundred parents gave their opinion. And the opinion was one out of these four categories. Now, it also tells us that no other response options were available. That means there's nothing that somebody could have selected which is not among these four options. Also, no respondent could choose more than one response option, which means that if a parent has selected strongly agree for reducing class sizes, they cannot just also select somewhat agree. One option for one category, for one action item. And it also tells us not every respondent gave an opinion for every activity. What does that mean? That if I think about this first activity of reducing class sizes, it's not necessary that I got an opinion from all 100 parents about this. What this means is that if I suppose think about reducing class sizes, then the parents who selected strongly agree. How many parents are these? Remember this 0.4 is the percentage of respondents, the percentage itself. It's not 0.4 percent. 0.4 itself is in the percentage form. So if I calculate how many parents this is, it's this percentage of 100, which means it's 40 parents who selected strongly agree for this first activity. Similarly, if you find it for the other uh, responses, somewhat agree, 47 parents, 11 parents somewhat disagree, and two parents strongly disagree. Now, if you add all of these numbers, this is how much? 87, 87 plus 11 is 98, 98 plus 2 is 100. So in this case, I have responses from all 100 parents because the sum of these came out to be 100. Essentially, you could simply have added these values and if all of these together turn up to be one, then that means it's completely taking all of the parents into account, all 100%, because 100% just means 100 over 100, which is one. But not everywhere is that going to happen. For example, if you take expanding library hours and you add these numbers, it does not reach one. That means here, not all the parents express their opinion and these remaining people were those who did not give an opinion. I don't have a category written here, but still we understand understand it is going to be the difference between 100 and the sum that I get from all of these categories combined. So with this, we completely understand everything that is given to us. Let's just see what the question is now asking. If you found the analysis of this data set helpful, then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. So here we are. It says for each of the following questions. Okay, so I have some questions here. Yeah, I have a question mark here, here and here. For each of these, select can be determined, which is this first column here, if the answer to that question can be determined from the information. So you're exactly using the same language. Otherwise, you will select cannot be determined. Basically, all of the information that we have here, this table and everything else that we have here, if using that information, we can get an answer to this question. We don't care about what the answer is, but it is about whether I can answer the question. If I can, I'll mark can be determined. But if I cannot answer it based on everything, it's a situation like I don't know what the answer will be. I'll mark cannot be determined. What is the first one asked? Okay, let's take this aside. And here we go. Let's read. It says, did most respondents who indicated they somewhat agreed that class sizes should be reduced 
also indicate something else. That means this entire thing here is just a description of which respondents you're looking at first. And then you're looking at whether most of these respondents also indicate something else. I'll read further, but first we'll understand this much. So did most of which respondents? Let's find this group first. It's the respondents who indicated somewhat agreed to a certain activity to class sizes being reduced. So if I try to read that here, class size is being reduced. That's the first activity in my table. And somewhat agree is this number. The 0.47 is the percentage. So number of people is 47. So it's these 47 people that we are first of all talking about in the first statement. So let's understand this. I'm simply going to put this 47 number here. So it says, did most of these 47 people also indicate something else. Now, what is this something else? Let's read this further. That they somewhat agreed that music classes should be added. This is then another category. I know music classes was also a category here. Let's highlight that here. So strong, I found somewhat agree for reducing classes, 47. Now I'm talking about somewhat agree people for music classes. And these are how many? 0.22. So if I find the exact number, this is 22 people. So what is my question really asking? I will now try to reword all of that using the numbers I have. Essentially, it is saying that is most of this 47 people are most of these 47 here also among the 22, which means if I think about it this way, let's write the statement, do more than greater than equal to 50% of these 47 people. Why? Because that is what most means. Do these people somewhat agree to music classes? So music classes is the second category that I am seeing from among the people who first of all selected somewhat agree for reducing class sizes. So think again now, more than equal to 50% of 47. When I find half of 47, that is 23.5. Now, obviously I can't have decimal people. So this is actually rewritten. This can be rewritten as do at least 24 people out of these 47. Be very clear about this. It's not 24 people in total. I'm, so, I'm saying do at least 24 people out of these 42 somewhat agree to music classes also. So this way, at least I have have simplified my question and now we'll see how we can answer this. Observe very carefully. It seems as if it's asking something very difficult, but it's actually really, really straightforward. The total number of people who somewhat agree to music classes is 22 only. Then how can at least 24 people out of these 47 somewhat agree? Even if this 22 is completely a part of this 47, even then the maximum I can go is 22 out of 47 people. No, I will never be able to reach 24 people. And that too, when this 22 has an overlap with 47. In general, you have no idea whether it's the same people in both of these categories. These could be completely disjoint people. These 22 people who selected somewhat agree for music classes could be some other group of people people and these 47 could be some other. You have 100 people after all. There, there, there doesn't have to be an overlap between these. But I said, even in the case that there is an overlap, so think about this first, 22, 47 completely disjoint, then obviously do at least 24 is out of the question. In that case, zero out of these 47 people will be here. But again, in the best case scenario, even if there is perfect overlap between these, even then the maximum that you can have is 22 out of 47. You will never be able to reach at least 24. So despite not knowing anything about the relationship between these people, whether there's an overlap or not, I am sure that in all extreme cases, I took zero overlap versus perfect overlap, I am getting a no for my question in every case, which means this is something that I can answer based on the information and I will mark cannot be determined. So really interesting translation here and very, very important inferences here as well as we try to answer this question. Now then we'll come here and again, look at the rest of the questions. First one is out of the way. Let's take the second one to the side. So here's your question. This says what percentage of all respondents, so I am talking about all 100 respondents, what percent of them chose not to give an opinion about something specific, athletic facilities? I know how this works because we understood the data set really well. So I am talking about this last activity only and I want to know what percentage did not express an opinion. Firstly, all those who did express an opinion are here, right? So if I add all of these numbers, I will get something which gives me the percentage who did express an 
second opinion it is going to be less than equal to 1 for sure if i get 1 then that means 100% of the people expressed an opinion but if i get less than 1 it means less than 100% expressed an opinion or that some people did not in any case whatever this sum is let me denote this sum by s once i subtract this sum from s i will get the percentage who do not express an opinion right so this percentage can be calculated is all i am interested in right now look at your question it didn't ask for what the percentage is it's like can you answer or can you not so suppose this sum comes out one in that case 0% people do not express an opinion i will be able to get the answer suppose this sum is equal to 0.9 in that case 1 minus 0.9 0.1 which means 10% did not express an opinion so in any case since i can add numbers to get the sum i can obviously also subtract it from one so i'm not going to waste any time in actually getting the values i know i can do it that's how you have to be very smart in where you spend your energy where you do the work and where you infer and move on at this point let me ask you this could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented such is the power of the process of owning the data set and because this skill may not come naturally to many of you we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the egmat di course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz In fact in the table analysis modules in the GITA course we teach you how to get comfortable with the table so that you can process it in the most efficient way we serve more than 65 specially curated questions at the right progression so that you learn various aspects of the table analysis questions including the process skills of inference translate and visualize thus throughout the di course through around 500 questions you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach let's now get back to the solution at hand finally let's look at this last statement here's question number 3 what percentage of all respondents so all 100 i'm looking at what percent of them indicated that they strongly disagreed with all four actions okay so i don't care about individual actions now i want to see all the people who strongly disagreed with all four of these actions here now is there a way for me to find that not really understand this when we were discussing the previous part also we said we had no idea about what the overlap is for example these two people who strongly disagree with reducing class sizes these could be completely different from these 17 people who said they strongly disagree with adding music classes on the other hand they could also be the same people as well which means these two people from reducing class sizes could belong to these 17 only there could be perfect overlap so i don't know whether these are distinct people or there is overlap or if there's overlap between two out of these categories you know all three all four i don't know what to make out of this unless i know what people these are different people common people it's impossible for me to tell where do i have that overlap so think about the four categories this way you are talking about the intersection of all four circles so if i make it this way i want to see where all of the four circles overlap it's impossible for me to do that with just this much information so here then this one we will mark cannot be determined for and that can completes our last statement as well let's now nicely summarize this so first obviously we clearly understood everything that was given to us we took an example we took the reducing class sizes example to see how we were getting these people then we went into our statements one by one every time before getting into the data we determined what is the approach that will work for us in this first one it was translation heavy so it was interesting to see how we can simplify the question for ourselves first and then try to answer it here we had multiple elements you know most of the people then finding which people you're talking about then going into a sub category of those people very clear we had to be that this 24 that i'm talking about is it's out of the 47 that that was described so then we saw multiple cases here to see that no matter what possibilities you look at in every case the answer is a sure no so we could answer this one on the second one though it was a simpler question to answer about people who did not give an opinion so that was simple because we can easily see who did give an opinion from the table so subtracting from 1 gives you the right percentage this one again was about 
understanding how the data is presented so somebody who's completely owned the data set somebody who completely understands that these are the people who will be less than equal to 100 because it's all of the people but going vertically i have no idea about what the overlap is what the sum should be are they distinct are they common people so that clarity about how it changes from reading row wise to reading it column wise that clarity helped me very confidently answer this third statement that this is something i cannot answer so always make sure you thoroughly understand your data set you know how how the values are written what everything means so that when it comes time to do questions it's about translating inferring at least it's never about not understanding the question itself